Hi beautiful people, Leticia here on this beautiful Sunday evening coming to you from Cherry Beach Park in Toronto where I'm actually a little bit further east of there I don't know what the park is called but it's beautiful we're just passing by a swamp right now anyway I hope you all had a wonderful peaceful Sunday and uh, I feel very blessed because earlier today I got to watch uh, a very powerful and inspiring live stream uh, hosted by London Rio. It was the fourth interview Brian Rose of London Rio did with David Icke. The last interview Brian Rose hosted with David Icke became the biggest live stream in internet history. They had 1.3 upwards of 1.3 million concomitant viewers um, as far as I understand it was literally the the biggest live stream in history today's interview was definitely not a disappointment it was absolutely amazing so inspiring so empowering you've got this 68 69 year old man who is just not afraid not afraid of anything he is so inspiring and I recommend all of you watch this interview and um, and big kudos to Brian Rose of London Real. Uh, he has taken so much criticism in recent weeks and, uh, and months since he announced that he was going to launch his digital freedom platform. As many of you know, um, some of his own content started becoming censored by YouTube, Facebook. His whole LinkedIn profile got deleted. Later, he was replatformed because he made a big fuss of it and he has a large following, something like 1.8 million uh, followers on YouTube. And, uh, you know, David Icke himself, this, you know, 68, 69 year old man, you know, the cabal, the powers not to be are freaking afraid of him. You know, they deplatformed him uh, off of YouTube. His channel was deleted. Uh, he's been deleted basically everywhere. I think he's still on Twitter. He, of course, has his own platform, but again, I'm very grateful to Brian Rose for giving him a voice because people clearly want to hear his message and uh, his message. Yes, my love, I'm coming. His message is one of empowerment for all humans. You know, um, he, he talks about, you know, civil disobedience. We have the power. There are almost Eight, not, not there, my love, that's where the bikes go. Come this way. There are, you know, almost 8 billion of us on the planet and there are literally, there's a handful of people at the top of this pyramid, if we can call it that, that are trying to dictate the lives of all of us. Um, and literally, we're almost there, my love. Um, yeah, they, they think they can dictate the lives of all of us and uh, they are imposing this increasing oppression on all of us. But, you know, what's going to turn that tide and what's going to change things is us taking a stand, each and every one of us saying, no, I'm not going to wear a mask and no, I'm not going to social distance. Like once you do your research and you understand that this whole thing that they pulled on us was a big scam, you're not going to, you, you are your own person. You can refuse these measures. And if more and more of us did that, they don't stand a chance. What are they going to do? Try to arrest uh, 8 billion people? No, it's not going to work. Of course, they have other evil technologies that they're trying to uh, use on us, such as potentially the, you know, the 5G grid and they have other technologies. But you know what? It takes a lot of order followers. And unfortunately, they have a lot of them on, you know, they have a lot of order followers to try to implement all this evil. I still have faith in humanity. I have faith that among, you know, there are enough people in government that are eventually gonna say, no, I'm not doing that. Damn my salary. I'm not doing that. I'm not gonna turn guns against my own people. I'm not gonna keep deploying this evil technology against, you know, my own fellow citizens, my own fellow human beings. I'm walking with my son and, uh, we saw, again, a pretty blatant amount of chemtrailing going on in Toronto today. Anybody looking out their window can see. People look at the uh, sunset with this purplish color and think, oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah, did you see how that got created? Hello? Did you fucking see how that got created? They've been spraying us all day today. I mean, at least since I got out. And, and I tell my son, you know, you know who, who, who is doing that? Some fucking order follower is doing that. 
people who are simply following orders they're not questioning what their actions are doing to their own children for fuck's sakes you know um i have faith i, I still have faith that some of these people are, are gonna drop their guns physically and, and virtually and are gonna start doing the right thing and furthermore i have faith in all of us who are taking a stand fellow canadians fellow lovers of freedom and justice and and of humanity from all over the world and just today i learned of an amazing patriotic canadian by the name of let's see if i get this right norman traversy his website is canadian oh my god justiceforcanada.ca and this is a remarkable man what he did is you know in light of the uh snc lavalin scandal about you know about a year ago he uh he didn't feel justice was being done so he decided to take justin justin trudeau to court and uh you know we have the right to do that any canadian has the right to do that of course a lot of us would not even think to do that but this man was like i'm taking justin trudeau to court and he did so and he was given a court date and then he found out the first time he went there and he had witnesses he had done his due diligence he had lots of um he was prepared to go to court and he was um uh, yes exactly alicia god bless you you're awesome and uh you know the first time he went to court they uh they said oh the judge is sick so he's like yeah of all the judges in canada they're all in, in ottawa they're all sick okay fine he was given a second day to go to court he shows up there at 9 30 as he you know he had been told to to show up there what is it anthony yeah and um and essentially he was there with some four witnesses i think he had a lawyer with him anyway he shows up and the door was locked in his face and his name was nowhere to be seen on all the different uh court rooms and uh it was a travesty of justice and now this brave amazing canadian he uh he's not giving up his fight and uh he he's gone to elections canada because he says that this was an obstruction of justice and this was election meddling because if the information had come up let's keep going my love if the information had come out that he was going to disclose in that in that uh courthouse you know very likely justin trudeau would have not gotten re-elected so anyway he I has continued to pursue all kinds of avenues to try to get justice uh what's happening is that as some of you may already know july 1st uh there's gonna be a big march on, on capitol hill uh i think that's what it's called parliament hill and uh as some of you know many of us have already been attending our local freedom gatherings in toronto but uh july 1st we're gonna be going there and this amazing patriot is also gonna be going there and uh he has a big following you see i only found out about him literally today amazing man check out his website justiceforcanada.ca and uh he also knows that you know the whole corona thing is a sham and that's being you know foisted on the people and so on and uh one thing he's going to do next is you know that same day july 1st after we're on parliament hill he's gonna be together with a group of other patriots marching to the u.s embassy where apparently the the usmca act which is going to be replacing nafta that's coming into effect july 1st and uh, in that act that says that if there's any corruption uh you know you cannot proceed essentially that that the other two governments have to investigate if there's corruption going on in the other government so anyway he wants to bring the attention of the us to the rampant corruption uh happening in canada at the highest levels i mean it was just like you gotta listen i i posted the video link a little earlier i i highly recommend that you watch it i posted it on the back to work group but it's a public group you should be able to see the link of uh of this amazing man justice for canada .ca. so that's about all i wanted to share tonight uh everyone uh it makes me so proud and inspired to see that there are patriotic canadians taking a stand for what is right and uh and i think our numbers are growing because the what is it the corruption and the the injustice has become so in your face um speaking of civil disobedience uh to all my friends in ontario 
Have you seen the uh, the newest ridiculousness that the uh, that our government has come up with? Social distancing circles, or what are they calling them? Social circles. Like that is the most unbelievable attempt at social engineering, and you would have to be an idiot, quite simply, to try to to even think of following such insane orders. My encouragement, my my advice: do what you like, associate with who you like. They're not going to be able to arrest us all, okay? Or ticket us all. And if they do ticket us, we're just not going to pay the tickets. Simple, simple. We're going to find ways around this corrupt system that has been, uh, you know, literally no, 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 enslaving no, exactly. humanity for a long time. And uh, here in Canada, perhaps we had it better than other countries. Yes, we did. But these people are trying to really trample all over our human rights. And we're not going to let them. We're not going to permit that. There's more of us than there are of them, a lot more of us. And we, the people have the power. And we, it's about time that we claim that power, we reclaim our power or perhaps stand in our power for the first time ever. And uh, don't let them bully us. Exactly, unity. That's right. I really, again, encourage everyone to watch this amazing interview that David Icke did today with uh, London Real. LondonReal.tv forward slash Ike, I-C-K-E. Uh, I absolutely love what he talks about, you know, including this recent uh, race baiting that's been going on. He says, you know, I would encourage black people, white people do not identify with your skin color. He says, my self identity is of infinite consciousness inhabiting this temporary, you know, human body. I am infinite consciousness having a temporary human experience. And when your self identity is that, you become you know, essentially unstoppable. I don't claim to be as evolved as he is, but just hearing him speak like that, it was so inspiring. And, and once you identify with, you know, infinite consciousness, you realize that we really are all in this together, but not in the way, in this contrived way that they're trying to, uh, you know, program us with. No, we are in this together as infinite consciousness, powerful beings. And we're gonna have our freedom. We're gonna own our freedom like never before. <sighs> don't run into the lake. <laughs> My little man is like, don't run into the lake. We got to the uh, edge of Lake Ontario here. Beautiful, beautiful sunset. Again, I could do without the chemtrails, but hey, we're gonna get to that. We are gonna get to that. We're gonna expose Mama, this darkness and this uh, turn it to light. We're not yet at Cherry Beach, I know. We uh, we parked a little far, but we're, we're gonna get to Cherry Beach. Don't worry, my love. Anyway, I just wanted to say a few words again to encourage everyone to uh, to watch the David Icke, Brian Rose fourth interview that took place today. Absolutely powerful, absolutely inspiring. And, uh, and also to let people know about this amazing Canadian at justiceforcanada.ca. Uh, he deserves our support. I will do what I can amazing brave man and again he's encouraging he's inspiring other canadians to step up and uh claim our rights claim our power god bless us all take care everyone blessings peace